Welcome back to Clash of Cultures. As we continue along with our 2023 college football preview series, we take a look at the USC Trojans and what their prediction and projections are for this season. I'm um, kind of just just to see where everyone's heads at um, as far as this team and what their expectations are uh, for this program with Lincoln Riley and the reigning Heisman winner and Caleb Williams. But as always, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We post college football content every single day, two live shows a week. We go live previewing and then recapping every game. Um, or every week, I should say. Um, so it's been really fun. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. We're gonna be giving away a signed Heisman jersey. I almost said the, the guy's name on accident, so good thing I didn't do that. Um, it Ooh. is a big name player we're giving out, so make sure you guys join the community for a chance to win that. Um, we also do our college football pick'em, which is gonna be locking once the season starts. The link is in the description below, so make sure you guys join that. We also have our Discord that just launched a few days ago. The link is in the description below for that one as well. I know we have a lot of announcements, um, but those of you guys have been rocking us the last couple of months. Kind of been keeping up with it. Those of you guys just uh, kind of joining the channel and the community, welcome. Um, it's been super fun. We're trying to grow this channel um, and the community just to kind of have healthy, cultural dialogue on a daily basis. Um, it's been really fun. Um, with all being said, Dad, what is your expectations for USC and kind of your um, your outlook on them this year? Yeah, I, I feel like USC has to feel like it is college football playoff or bust. Um, now, obviously, the concern is going to be on defense, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But on offense, they're bringing back so much. Obviously, it starts with Caleb Williams, uh, the reigning Heisman. Uh, but Dorian Singer coming over from Arizona, a 1,000-yard receiver. Um, Brendan Rice, um, Mario Williams, who came over from Oklahoma. Austin Jones is uh, replacing Travis Dye. Uh, but Austin Jones had 700 yards I mean, rushing himself. Um, so at the running back spot, um, you are replacing uh, with – transfers uh, to uh, your entire right side of your offensive line. So the offense should be set. I, I think there's no questions or concerns um, to include some freshman receiver they brought in. And I think you mentioned this, right? Two of the top, uh, and I think really the two top. Number one and number two. Of this um, so, you're, so you're bringing in uh, a, a bunch of talent. You're bringing back a bunch of talent. Um, so you have to feel good about the offense. And I don't think that was USC's problem last year. The problem was the defense. And the real question is, they are one, two, three, four, five, six players, it looks like, that are going to be starting or at least are projected to start um, that are going to be transfers. Now, again, they brought in some great names. I like Mason Cobb, uh, Anthony Lucas, but uh, Bear Alexander. Um, so they've brought in names. But I think with, with defense, it has to be a cohesive unit. So now I think they have talent, which I don't think has ever been a problem at USC. But you are in, and we've talked about this a number of times, a power-packed, offensive-laden Pac-12. Uh, you have some teams that can get up and down the field. Um, and, and this includes some teams that we don't really look at as normal power offensive teams. Oregon State, I think, is going to be much better on offense. We talked about the Washingtons, the Oregons, the Utahs. Um, all of them are going to be great on offense. Um, and where USC had problems is in shootouts. In, all, in, in the games they lost, the problem wasn't their ability to move up and down the field. The problem wasn't their ability to score. They lost to Utah twice. I, I really kind of don't count the two-lane game too much. Um, but their problem was the ability to stop people. So if these new transfers to include, I think, dang near their whole front seven, um, I think only one player in their front seven is going to be a guy that's returning. Uh, so six players in their front seven are going to be uh, – are, are going to be – new uh new transfers um or five five if they if they go uh in a nickel um can these guys get after the football can they put pressure on the quarterback can they get uh the defense off the field and get the offense back on the field if they can't do those things usc is going to struggle again in shootouts in a shootout yeah usc is going to win some of those but you're also going to lose some of those if i can't stop a team um so they need this to be a top 25 defense. They need the defense to be good. Uh, and like I said, I think the trajectory of USC this season absolutely relies on this defense. I think the offense is going to be amazing. Uh, but if this defense can't stop people, they're going to have problems. What's your thoughts? So um, those of you guys who have been here since last season knows that I wasn't very really high on USC last year. I'm more high on them this year, obviously. I think they have one of the best offenses in the country. I, too, think that if they don't make the playoffs, it's a bust. Um, you bring back, I would say, the best player in college football. I mean, him or Marvin Harrison, obviously. But, yeah. I mean, he is he is the reigning Heisman winner. Um, he is the projected number one overall pick um, pretty easily um, right now. Um, so I think if they don't make the playoffs, it is 100% a bust. 
Um, obviously, Lincoln Riley is the quarterback guru kind of guy. The last, you know, six to eight years or so. What is he? Um, he got what? He has what? a bunch of Heisman. Four Heismans? Kyler, 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 Baker. Um, I don't think oh, Jaylen, Caleb, but uh, um, Jalen Hurts Caleb, finished yeah. second. But I mean, still, I mean, if you if you just look at those four quarterbacks, Baker, Kyler, um, Jalen, and then obviously um, Caleb, Caleb Williams, and, and then now you have Malachi Nelson coming in, the number one overall recruit. I think you have to at least make the playoffs. But the problem is they are, like you said, in a very loaded conference. Um, if you look at their schedule, it's very backloaded, obviously. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, you play San Jose State. Um, and then you play Nevada, Stanford, Arizona State, Colorado, Arizona. I think they start off 6-0. and um, I think nice. they're going to be heavily favored in pretty much all those games. I think the Arizona game might be the, the closest game, but I still think they're probably favored by two scores or more. Yeah, um, and I think they cover. Um, and then really towards the back end, other than They're Cal, the, other than Cal, every game is going to be either a touchdown um, or less, or they might even be the underdog um, in some of these games, depending on how the season goes. You play at Notre Dame. Um, as a Clemson fan, I know how tough it is to win um, at Notre Dame in Indiana. It's going to be a tough environment, especially in October. It could be bad weather. Um, USC is not used to playing in bad weather. I um, mean, that's another discussion that we could have for when they go to the Big Ten. Um, I've seen a lot of posts about that. Um, mm -hmm. And then, obviously, Utah. Utah beat them twice last year, um, won the Pac-12 championship back-to-back -back, um, in back-to-back -back years. So that is not a um, an easy game by any means. I think Cal, obviously, they're going to probably walk over Cal. They've been down um, for the last decade or so. UW, who has Penix, another Heisman-type um, quarterback. Um, obviously, it's at home, but it's going to be a great game. Two high-powered offenses, so I can see that game going either way. And then I think the scariest game on the schedule is probably the Oregon game. Um, yeah. Oregon's offense is just as high power. Oregon had the best defense in, in the conference last year. I believe they're number one or number two. You have to go to Eugene to play in that game. Another, you know, game where it's in the PNW, um, Pacific Northwest is going to have terrible um, weather in that game, most likely. Um, and it's going to be rocking. Yeah, and we're probably going to go to that game. Um, so we may do a vlog or something like that for the channel in that game. Um, my dad's going to be here um, during that time, so we might go to that game. And then you've had to finish – uh, for the victory bell um, again, against UCLA at the end of the year. Um, so I think all of those or five of those last six games are all toss-ups um, with UCLA, Oregon, Washington, uh, Utah, and Notre Dame. So I don't think they're going to go seven and five. Now I think it could happen, um, but I think realistically, I'm pretty sure I said they go 10 and two or 11 and one in my prediction that we did two months ago. We've done, we've done so many, so I forget to be honest with you guys. Um, but I, I don't think, um, USC is going to get in the playoffs. I don't think there's going to be a Pac-12 playoff. I know my dad guaranteed it. Um, and guaranteed. He actually, but pretty and you pretty much guaranteed Oregon then, right? No, no, Oregon, no. I, Oregon's no, your winner. I, Oregon is who I predict to win, mm -hmm. but I am saying whoever wins the Pac-12 will get in the playoffs. So it may okay. not be Oregon. I, I wouldn't be. Sh I, I I will not guarantee Oregon, but okay, I will but guarantee the Pac-12. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be very hard for USC to get in. Obviously, they don't play Oregon State, who's another, you know, I wouldn't say playoff contender, but they're still a power or a Pac-12 contender. Um, they were a 10, 10 and 4 team last year, so they have the ability to knock off any one of these teams as well. Obviously, they have a question surrounding their quarterback situation. But I think the obvious concern for USC is the defense, which I think is going to be better under Grinch and the transfer, transfers that they brought in. Um, so I think they are going to be better, um, but we'll just have to see. Yeah, I, I mean, like you mentioned, uh, playing in the Pac-12 next year is going to be brutal, um, especially for USC when you got to add the Notre Dame game because that's a rivalry game. And that's, like you mentioned, uh, going to Notre Dame um, with Hartman, uh, that's not an easy win. I've mentioned that as an Ohio State fan, right? That That's a game that gives me concern. I mean, like I said, that's a rivalry game. And I, I don't think you can brush past that UCLA game, like you said, for a victory bell. Um, a rivalry game. Do I think USC is more talented? Yes, but you are also coming off a game at Washington and a game at Oregon. Um, and I think both of those games are going to push you to the brink. Uh, I would not be shocked if there's not not a little bit of an emotional uh, letdown at the UCLA game. Um, so yeah, the back part of this schedule is tough. And if that defense is not locked in and kicking it, um, they are going to have problems. They are they are truly going to have problems. Um, I, like I said, I think the offense is going to be great. But you are not going to win all of those games in a shootout. You are more than likely going to lose two of those games in a shootout. So if you can't stop people, uh, they're going to have problems. And I will say this. I think it, it's, it works against them heavily having that bye week so early in the season. 
yeah. um, having a week for a bye week. Obviously, I think if you had a bye week, maybe between the Notre Dame and the Utah game, um, that would help out tremendously, or even right before the Notre Dame game. But the fact that you have to reel off five quality opponents in a matter of a month, um, yeah. October 14th to November 18th, that is a month that we're talking of realistically four playoff contenders, if we're being honest. Um, yeah. All four of those teams could realistically be in the playoffs, and I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and then, obviously, you have UCLA, who's a notch below, but it's still a rivalry game, still going to be heated tension. Um, that game could go either way. I think that game was really close last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, I mean, really anything could happen. I would say, though, to kind of end, end our top or end our discussion on this topic, if USC does not make the playoffs this year, um, I think it is a cause for concern um, because of the talent they brought in this year and the talent that that brought back, obviously bringing back the Heisman winner, who's the overwhelming favorite for the Heisman this year. Um, it would be a, it would be a concern to me if they don't. And I wouldn't say, like, let's say they were the first, like if they were number one or number two out, I would be like, okay, like the cards just didn't fall in their favor. But if they're like, you know, 10 and two and they're number nine or 10, kind of how Clemson ended up last year. I mean, when you, you saw, say you, cause for concern, what do you mean? Like Lincoln Riley's on the hot seat? No, but it's like, okay, so what is, I mean, what is the ceiling going to be? Because last year they lost to Tulane in the bowl game. You bring back your, the best player in the country, and then you got to go replace him with Malachi Nelson, who we expect is to be good, but it's not Caleb Williams. So yeah, where, where I would say the cause for concern is, is I think you're taking some of the best teams from the Pac-12. You're putting them, them, them into the Big Ten, where you've also added a couple of other pretty good teams, right? And we talked about weather, and I, I'm sure we'll talk in nausea about um, as we get closer to USC joining the Big Ten and, you know, all the teams that are joining the Big Ten. But you're taking three teams that could beat you and going to a conference with another four or five teams that could beat you on any given season. That I think that, again, if we're looking at the future of USC, that may be the cause for concern. Definitely. Um, but that is, that is our thoughts on uh, USC and – um, their project projection and our outlook on them this year. I do have trivia before we head out of here. So the trivia for today is another guess the NFL player um, or guess the college that the NFL player went to. Uh, so the first player we're going to start off with is DeForest Buckner. And he is from Hawaii, by the way. He went to St. Louis. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, didn't he go to USC? No, but he did go to Pac-12 school. I, I know it's somewhere over there. Um, wasn't UCLA? Oh, Oregon. He went to Oregon. I should have got that. I remember that. Okay. Where did Laramie Tunsil go to college? Ole Miss. Ole Miss. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Where did – let's find a good one. Where did Eric Kendricks, the linebacker, go to? UCLA. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll do two more. Okay. Where did Jalen Smith, the linebacker, go to? Uh – Notre Dame? Notre Dame. He's the one who got hurt uh, in the playoff game, right? Um, no, no, no. That wasn't him. That wasn't him. But, yeah, okay. I remember him. Last one. Um, I don't think he's in the NFL anymore. Oh, um, he, but he was on the top 100 list in 2020. So, okay. where did Chris Carson, the running back, go? Oh, the uh, for, for the Seahawks. For the Seahawks. Yeah. If you get this one, I'd be very surprised. Chris Carson. It was a power five school. Washington? No. It's a big uh, 12 school. Kansas State? He went to Oklahoma State. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. So that, that was the trivia for today. Let us know in the comment section what, how many you guys got. Also, make sure you guys join our Discord um, for our community. We have uh, conversations about football every day and that as well. Um, join the Pick'em. The, the link is in the description for that. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.